What is good boys? Welcome to the first ever Azerite guide on YouTube. Yes, that's right, the first ever one. <clears throat> or at least the second, but this one doesn't count anymore. In this video that you are watching right now, I'm going to teach you as much as I can in 30 minutes about Azerite. I'm going to show you all the tier 1 to tier 7 armors and weapons. I'm also going to show you how to start out as an account, what I would do personally. On top of any other tips and tricks I do have, not only that, I will be opening a ton of mystery boxes towards the end of the video to show you what you can get from them. Essentially, if you don't play Azerite or you're not planning on playing Azerite, this video is probably not for you. We'll be back with some pod content very, very soon, but I figured this video needs to come out. I mean, we've got over 500 players and half of them are fucking clueless. So it's perfect. Whenever anyone asks, I can just tell them to go to Colin Colin Diddy, watch this video. And if you're one of them people that's been sent here, Hello, I have literally made this video for you, so I do hope you enjoy. I'm going to be using Master Kid's guides that he made for the release, so shout out to you Master Kid. We've got Azerite Slayer, Reward Guides and Shop Guides, uh, Global Boss Guides, Items that gives you effects and benefits, and Armor Weapons, how to obtain them, and then finally the Upgrade Guide. I think it's probably best to start off with the armor and weapons. Melee armors tier 1 to tier 6, we have the ultra set. This can be obtained at the fry zone, each piece gives you 10,000 strength bonus. Super is a tier 2 melee armor, which is obtainable through the vendor zone. Each piece will give you 22,000 strength bonus. Tier 3, legendary. This can be obtained through the regna zone, and each piece will give you 35,000 strength bonus. Ruined is a tier 4 melee armor set, which is obtainable through the mandalorian zone. Each piece will give you 50,000 strength bonus. Extreme tier 4 set is obtainable through the Slayer shop. Every piece costs 5,500 Slayer tokens or 27,500 for the full set. It's also possible to get it through the upgrade machine by using Legendary and Super Armor together for a 50% chance to upgrade into Extreme. Each piece will give you 90,000 strength bonus. Tier 5, we have Bowser, which is an iconic set on Azerite. This can be obtained through Smash Raids. Each piece gives you 100,000 strength bonus and the full set effect makes it so the overhead press can't be knocked off. Very, very OP for places such as Extreme Gundam, Global Bosses. We actually have three different tier 6 melee armors. We have Reaper, which can be obtainable through the Bouncer Zone. Each piece of Reaper will give you 120,000 strength bonus. Warlord tier 6 is obtainable through Ratchet Zone, each piece giving you 150,000 strength bonus. The final tier 6 armor is new. You will need extreme armor and PVM shards tier 5 to make it. Giving you 172,000 strength bonus per piece. You're not messing about if you have this same game. Let me just tell you that. Last but not least, the creme de la creme. We have the best in slot melee armor. Oh, the Azerite set. The Azerite armor is best in slot melee, obtainable through colon colon upgrade. It will cost you an ultimate armor piece, two QT cash, a new armor piece, and an Azerite attachment to upgrade at a 50% chance rate. This armor is untradeable, and each piece gives you 250,000 strength bonus. Range armor tier 1 to tier 6. We actually skipped tier 1 with this, and we skipped straight to tier 2 being lava. It's obtainable through leader zone, and every piece will give you 22,000 range strength bonus. Tier 3 range armor is dodge, and this can be obtained through the nibbler zone, each piece giving you 35,000 range strength bonus. Gundam is a tier 4 range slash mage hybrid gear. This set is obtained through killing Gundam himself. Each piece of this will give you 76,000 range and mage strength bonus. Evil Gear is a tier 5 range armor set, which is obtainable through Captain Quirk Zone, and each piece of this will give you 120,000 range attack bonus. It's also worth mentioning that everything tier 5 and above will actually increase your HP by a little bit, which is extremely needed for the bosses that hit above 99. You literally can't kill them without. Tier 6 range armor would be ultimate. You can make it a colon colon upgrade. You need the Bowser piece and 50 PVM shards tier 5 to upgrade it. Each piece with 172,000 range strength bonus. Demon Flesh is the tier 7 range armor now. It's incredibly hard to obtain this. Each Demon Flesh piece will give you 275,000 range attack bonus, sir. Uh. I mean, if you want to grind out for it, be my guest. But the requirements might just cost you your social life. There is a less OP tier 7 range armor, which is called Fall Devil. Now, it's a lot easier to obtain, but still very hard to obtain. You get this from the final zone in game, the robot, at 1 out of 2,000 per piece. And the full set with the bow has an AoE effect, which makes it incredibly strong. Moving on to magic, tier 3 magic armor. We start off with Samurai. This can be obtained through Neo Cortex Zone and each piece gives you 45,000 magic strength bonus. Extreme Gundam being tier 5. 
You can get this through Colin Colin upgrade. You will need a singular Gundam piece and 500 Gundam tokens, as well as 100 mil cash to upgrade it. And it's only a 50% chance, but as I did say, it does have HP boosting effect as well. And each piece gives you 100,000 magic strength bonus. The tier 7 magic is for Man Ray. This can be obtained through Colon Colon upgrade at a 50% chance. You'll have to sacrifice an extreme Gundam piece, 300 mil cash, and 1,000 Man Ray tokens. The melee weapons tier 1 to tier 6. The tier 1 is Ultra Blade, obviously, from the Fry Zone. Tier 2 is from Bender Zone. Tier 3 is from Leela. And then tier 4 is from Regna. So the first 4 ones are actually from the first zone. So, yeah, we can move past that. 2B1 Keyblade is a tier 3 melee sword, which is obtainable through KH Raids. Sword will give you 250,000 strength bonus. Buster Blade is a tier 3 melee weapon, which is obtainable through Colon Colon Upgrade. You will need a Furious Sword and 50 PVM Shard tier 1s. This sword will also give you 250k strength bonus. Extreme Long Sword is a tier 4 melee sword, which is obtainable through $1 caskets, and that will give you 450,000 strength bonus. Fenrir Keyblade is also a tier 4 melee, it can be obtained through KH Raids, and it gives you 550k strength bonus. Lucky Glaive, a tier 4 melee weapon, can be obtained through the Slayer Shop. It costs 2,400 tokens, and that will give you 550k strength bonus. Tier 5 melee weapon, Shadow Glaive, can be obtained through the Vert Shop and from the Slayer Boss Darkrai. This bad boy will give you a whopping 650k strength bonus. The Soul Eater is also a tier 5 melee weapon, and this can be obtained through KH2. The Soul gives you an 800,000 strength bonus. Moving on to tier 6, being the Ultimate Glaive, can be obtained by Colon Colon Upgrade. You will need to sacrifice a Soul Eater, a Lucky Glaive, 500 mil cash, and a Shadow Glaive to upgrade it at a 65% chance. And for the tier 7, all of them come out of the 7 Deadly Sins raid. The Lost Vein has a 680k strength bonus. And then the hardest hitting weapon in game is the Divine Axe Rita. You need all 3 pieces to create this, and they all come from 7 Deadly Sins on the Ultra Rare Drop table. We skip tier 1 range weapon, we go straight to the Asphalt at tier 2. Can be obtained through Leela Zone, also gives 120,000 range strength bonus. The MP7 is a tier 3 range weapon which can be obtained through Colon Colon Upgrade. You could also get it from a $1 casket, I think it's the most common drop from them. And that gives you 200,000 range strength bonus. Tier 5 range weapon, the Slayer Org. Now this is where it starts to hit, pretty hard. Obtainable through Colon Colon Upgrade, you'll need to get an MP7, 180 million cash and 50 PVM shards tier 5 at an 80% chance success for it. This will give you 700,000 range strength bonus. Moving on to tier 6, we have the BFG 900. Can be obtained through the Slayer Shop, Global Bosses, Colon Colon Upgrade, and this will give you 550,000 range strength bonus. It goes hand in hand with the offhand, which has an extra 400,000 range strength bonus to it. And for the tier 7 range, we have the Tommy Gun, which will give you an outstanding 1 million range strength bonus. To obtain this at an 80% success rate, you need to sacrifice a BFG, a BFG offhand, 1 QT cash, and 150 PVM upgrade shards. Big, big, big boy grind, but it's so worth it because that shit hits. Finally, magic weapons tier 1 to tier 6. Raygun tier 1 is obtained through the Fry Zone. Tier 3 magic is the Rainbow Staff. It's obtainable through the Vert Star and also Flying Dutchman. Jumping a couple of tiers, we move on to the Earthkeeper Keyblade. This can be obtained through KH Raids, of course. Has an AoE effect and 15,000 magic strength bonus on it. For the tier 6, we have the Oblivion Keyblade, main hand and off hand. Obtainable through KH2 and Colon Colon Upgrade, the main hand will give you 300k magic strength bonus and the off hand another 300,000. The Packer Punch Raygun is the best in slot magic weapon, obtainable through Colon Colon Upgrade. You need to sacrifice a Raygun tier 1, 1 QT cash, a ton of PVM shards tier 5, and an Azurite attachment at only a 10% chance. Now that we have all the armors and weapons out of the way, I think if you're watching this far into the video, you're interested in joining. So I'm going to make a new account just to show you how easy it is to get yourself going. Alright, when you made your account, I would recommend going straight to the prayer skill to bank your noted items. And whilst you're here, you may as well load up the colon colon vert command. I believe one of the sites is broken right now, but that should be fixed in due timing. So yeah, make sure you do that. When you've done that, you'll see the free vert tickets appear in your inventory. And if you're lucky, you'll also get a vert casket to go with it. Which we got five furious flasks from. What you want to do is go to the Azerite CC and just put in there that you're selling free vert tickets and someone should PM you. If not, I would do Colin Colin POS and until someone does PM you, just throw them in my shop for uh, about 4 mil each. I'll put them in for. It looks like they're going for 8 mil each right now at the cheapest rate. I'll put them in there for 4 mil just to see how fast they'll sell. Literally, probably about 5 minutes later, I've come back to 12 mil. Let's go. And with this money, I'm going to click on it to exchange for cash and cut myself an MP7, a tier 3 gun. They only go for like 1 million right now, I believe. So yeah, let's cop one of them. 
I would also probably pick up full lava because lava is really cheap and that would give me a little bit of range bonus. The custom colours are the ones that I custom if you couldn't tell. Let's pick one of these up. Oh, he's got the full set. Lovely. And finally, the chaps, 150k. So we spent like 2 million and we got a full PVM setup now. You don't actually have to get any weapon upgrades or anything to kill Fry. You can just strip kill it with a starter set. But obviously, I'm just too efficient for that shit. I'm way too good at the game. So I also want to be picking up every single burn that you do get for the first zone. Because we are rushing straight for Soul Split. As soon as we get Soul Split, we can start doing all the global bosses. Ultra Gloves, nice. Coming in on 16 kill count. You see how fast this is. Ultra Blade over there as well. If you have got this set up, I would recommend just getting this square going. So you don't have to keep running around picking up all your loot. And obviously the burns do also stack, which will be beautiful. There's the Ultra Collector Tier 1. As soon as you got that, you can pick it up. There's the Ultra Helmet. Let's go. So now I've got 107 kills to get the body and legs, and if I don't, I don't even have to get them. I can move on to Bender. And there's a Mr. Incredible that I probably could go to. Mr. Incredible is probably the only one that I would recommend going to. If you haven't got Soul Split unlocked, just make sure you bring the Manta Rays that you start out with. We got it. And yeah, as you can see from the loot, Spat got a 25 scroll there. We got a $1 casket, which gave us quad cash. Oh, there's another 25 from the next one. And another two quad cash. Yeah, definitely make sure you go to the vote bosses, guys. Even if you're new, you can kill them. You just gotta attack it once, and at random, 50 people will get loot. If you teleport to Colin Colin's shops, you'll find all of these NPCs. We've got the donation manager, the vote manager, the trivia point shop, and the AFK star. We're gonna start off with the donation shop. Let's say you got a $50 scroll from Mr. Incredible. I would probably go for the resource caskets if you are new, because they would help you out a lot. From the vert star, I would recommend picking up the vert box tier 6. You have a chance to get in the 300 points vert chest tier 7 from this. And if you end up not getting that, you get these back anyway, so it's definitely worth it, I think. From the AFK star, I would recommend saving all of them to either sell to players or get the earner's attachment tier 6. And if you're an Iron Man without Ruby, I would recommend collecting this. And once you've bought that, maybe $1 caskets. But again, if you want to just go for the earner's attachments, that's probably a good shout as well. And... We actually didn't get the full set by 200, which is kind of surprising, but we actually have the kill count required. So we can claim it, and then move on to Bender. So I need to get all five of these drops. Oh, 400 kill count, which is actually really nice, because a lot of people went over 1,000 at Bender without completing the full set. You can use up all your burns that you get from Fry if you want, just here at the altar. Should get you to a decent level to hit them harder. Level 44 Eagle Eye, even that will give you a DPS boost by 15%. The Fountain of Rejuvenation is just located at Colon Colon Raids. I'd recommend teleporting here every time you're out of prayer. And then get on the fucking grind at Bender. You see that? I'm one hitting them. Oh, it's lovely. I'm already hitting 50 thousands. And we've already got Super Plate Legs Tier 2. Holy shit, within 5 kills. You could also start training your magic if you wanna, using the ray gun that you got from the other zone. Bender was completed in under 400 kill count. We completed it in 303, which is insane RNG. Let's claim that shit. And then we can move on to Leela. And once Leela is complete, we have unlocked Smash Raids, which is actually the biggest unlock of your account straight away. And there is a Mr. Incredible. We've got to go to it. I haven't brought any food there, so I might not survive this. It just really does depend on how fast he dies and how hard he hits me. I fucking tanked it, boys. Let's go. Can we get Spoonfed to 25? No, we can't, but 3MX did. 450 tier 2 burns, that's for sure gonna get us the level that we need for soul split. Just right click to toggle spellbook and then we have soul split unlocked. We can kill every global boss in game now. Coincidentally, a Mundo has just spawned, which is the AFK boss. It spawns every 1 million rocks that are mined. So for Mundo, you just gotta find a place where no one else is running. And even if you get hit by the Azerite block, it will just take off your soul split, so you won't die. As long as you do turn it back on straight away, you should be alright. And a lot of people don't know about this and they keep planking. But you can actually just run over people and kill them because two Azerite blocks will fall. And uh, it's good night at that point. You do want to stick out Leela until she is done. You gotta get the first three zones completely out of the way when you first join. In 238 kills we completed Leela, so we can claim a tier 2 gun, obviously, if you bought one of these off the bat. Unless you're an Iron Man, it shouldn't be an upgrade tier. We've also got a 15% damage boost for 15 minutes and then uh, 15 starter 1 boxes. I would probably take a little break from zoning right now and grab myself a Cartoon Network Slayer Task at Extreme. Now this is going to take you a long ass time, but it's going to be so worth it because as soon as you complete one of these tasks, you can go to the Slayer Shop and copy yourself a Lucky Glaive Tier 4. I got 902 cheese to go kill, so to get there just click teleport, 
And these actually have only 450k XP, so you should be able to kill them fairly quickly, especially with that DPS boost. You should be able to hit a lot harder. Now, you're actually capped at tier 3 armor here. So this is probably as good as you're going to get until you unlock dodge armor. A semi AFK moneymaker is Gundam. Now, because it's still early doors, Gundam pieces are worth a lot of money, especially the wings. You can make over 200 million per Gundam piece, and a lucky glove is selling for 100 mil. So if you actually are somewhat busy, and you don't want to kill like 800 slay monsters right off the bat, you can actually just chill at Gundam. He spawns every 20 seconds, and if you're lucky, you can end up making some real nice money here. There is only one pair of Gundam wings in the POS right now for 1 billion GP. Let's have a look at the boots. There's only one in there as well, and they go for 250 mil. Gundam body for 100 mil in there. Gundam helmet and Gundam gloves in there for 150 mil each. A $10 scrolling game currently is 60 to 80 mil, so that kind of puts it into perspective. So when you can afford the Lucky Glaive, you either buy it with GP or you buy it from the Slay Shop. And now what do we do? The answer now is to either make a lot of money or get the Earthkeeper for yourself. Colin Colin Braids is where you want to teleport. Before starting any grind, we do want to check the POS and see how much the keys are selling for. Currently, there should be quite a few people. Yeah, a lot of people are selling KH keys right now. The cheapest one in the POS right now is 3 million each from Zerk. If you really wanted to, you could actually sit around here and just sell all the keys you get until gear upgrades. Obviously, as I mentioned earlier, the next upgrade from the Lucky would be the Shadow Glaive, which will probably set you back around 800 million. So it might take you quite a while to grind out the amount of keys, but people will always buy them because they're after Earth Crystals. And the Earth Keeper is going for around 2 QT in game right now, so it's definitely a good place to start out. You could also try a look at the keys yourself and maybe even pull the Earth Keeper. It's extremely rare, but there is some other drops, such as like Ruby Donut Escrow, which would be huge for you. Infinite Prayer and Furious 2, which is well needed down the line. We didn't unlock Smash Raid for no fucking reason. We're going to try and find a Smash Party. I'm actually on an alt account. No one knows it's me. I'm going to see how easy it is to find one. Looking for Smash. Looking for Smash also. Looking for easies. It took us less than a minute to uh, find a Smash group. We've got two people in Lucky Glaives. Unless you've got a Smash Team carry, I would recommend doing easies, especially if you're running like tier 4 weapons. But with this gear and army, you should be able to do it really, really quickly. Look how fast we're killing them. So satisfying. Oh, see you soon, bruh. That's one of the mechanics to Bowser. You can't stand underneath it. We got five raid tokens from it. <laughs> and we just completed the progression task to complete a smash raid. Let's go. I get so addicted to running smash. It's unreal. It's a nice break from all the other content there. These actually do have mechanics. As you can see, these guys are getting a bit confused on how to do it. With DD, you were supposed to use range. You're not even supposed to use melee on him. And if you stand back, you will get stunned. Him and Captain Falcon are the only ones that you shouldn't use melee on. All the others you'll be alright with. Damn, we missed out on the vert boss. That's the only downside we're doing Smash, I reckon. But it's alright, because we got purple sweet. It's a sad game. Not only the fact that Bowser is used to create tier 6 armor at a 70% chance, you can also get the infinite Smash Mix, which is a $1,000 donation point item from Smash Raids itself. So, Smash Raids is always going to be thriving, and it's such fun content. Not to mention, from doing any raids in game, you'll collect raid tokens to spend in the raid shop. You can buy full extreme here, as well as a tier 5 Shadow Glaive. Extreme Ring Tier 4 and even Legendary Ring Tier 3. Now that you have a ranged weapon and self bar unlock, you can actually go down to Extreme Gundam. The mechanics to this is uh, exactly the same as Mundo actually. If you get hit by his portals, he'll knock off your cell split. Just pay attention to it and you shouldn't die as long as you keep pressing cell split after he does the attack. And it is a global boss as you can see, so you're letting everyone else do the work for you. It's beautiful. Good luck my friends, are we going to get lucky? No, we don't. No one got an announce, but... Here is the drop table for the Extreme Gundam. You can get Emerald, Sapphire, and Ruby Donator Scrolls, as well as QT boxes, and then Gundam tokens, which are used for Colin Colin upgrade, of course. So we're gonna do a Crazy Frog event. I just wanna show you how the mechanics of this one works. Uh, he spawns every $100 donated, and what you wanna do is just avoid the Black Puddle. As long as you stay outside of that, you shouldn't die with Cell Split activated. Very easy global boss to do, and... Hey, a Ruby Donator scroll. Could have been a lot better, but still something. There is absolutely no mechanics to the event boss man rate and uh, random 50 get loot. Good luck, boys. Oh, oh my God. No way. We just seen the dance right attachment. Grass. Holy shit. It's an Iron Man as well. The weapon that you want to have your eyes set on is the, the Arg, man. The tier five Arg. The cash will come in due timing, but the PVM shards upgraded is what will take a while to get. 
They are currently going for 30 million each on the POS. And uh, the best way to farm these is from doing Slayer. Even at the Kazu Network, you'll get a decent amount of the regular PVM shards that you can then upgrade in the upgrade machine. The Kazu Network Slayer Dungeon will drop them fairly commonly. 1 out of 5 chance to drop 1 always, and then 1 out of 3, 1 out of 15. It gets better as you move on through the Slayer Caves, but to move on through the Slayer Caves, I would really recommend upgrading your gear, so make sure you go into your Pokemon with decent gear, else you might have a hard time. This guy's a pure example of how long it will take in full Legendary and a Lucky Glaive. Hey, it's Dan Dan. I know Dan Dan. Hey. Dan Dan the man man, I didn't even know it was him. Grinding away brother, I love to see it. But yeah, on the drop table, you'll see the drop a, f a fairly bit more. You also have a 1 out of 300 chance of getting 20 PVM shards at once, which is pretty huge. Personally, I know how long it does take to get these PVM shards, especially as an Iron Man, it do be rough. But it is a grind that will most definitely pay off if you are successful with the upgrades, man, but... Doing the Pokemon Dungeon is in fact the best way to farm these PVM shards now, I believe. It used to be the Slayer bosses, which do also drop them, just not as frequently anymore. If you are an Iron Man, I would probably recommend sticking around at these zones until you are fully done with Regnar, because it's going to be the best in slot melee you'll have for a little while. Not only that, you'll also get a KH Scroll tier 4 and 5 $1 caskets, and obviously, the KH Scroll will be nice for making that money, because you'll be making 6 mil every 30 seconds instead. And not to mention, you need to do 250 KH ones to unlock Kingdom Heart 2 Red anyway, so you're going to have to do it, and you may as well use a scroll. Which brings me on to my next segment of the video, let's go over the raid's requirements. KH1 raid has absolutely no requirements to it. Smash raids obviously you have to get through Leela, which is the first 3 zones. KH2 you need to complete the first 5 zones, as well as complete 250 KH ones. And to do 7 deadly sins raid you need to do 8 zones. You can also work through the progression managers, now to get to here you go to the Azerite tab and then just click on the tools, you'll see a ton of options. Feel free to go through these all by yourself, but yeah, the progression manager, I don't really focus on like achieving any of these, it just kind of happens and I've recently unlocked this one that I haven't yet claimed. That's a free KH scroll right there and all I've done is claim 20 votes, do 100 raids and complete 30 KH raids. One that I would say that you can go for if you fancy playing the server for a long ass time is to complete 100 hard slayer tasks. You actually get 10 super launch caskets and these are worth $20 each on the donator star. I know that you're going to be interested in what sort of loot and boxes you're going to be opening. Now I've got a ton of the ones that you probably will be seeing on your adventures. Legendary and ultimate keys come from raids and PVM combat. Vert boxes and caskets and even $1 caskets don't even need any explanation. We are going to start off with these PVM keys though. What we're going to get from 30. These are only tier 3 by the way. So we're not really expecting anything huge. Best thing we can pull is 250 mil straight cash. And we didn't pull it unfortunately. Alright we got 30 tier 6s to open. 11 sky casket tier 5. There's a 1 PVM shad upgraded. And 5 more to go. Nothing. What a shame. 58 mil cash and 18 sky caskets. Standard stuff man. Next up 300 $1 caskets. We get... 4 MP7s, 45 quad cash from 100, even more MP7s, and we got Extreme Longsword and a Lucky Glaive. No BFGs, unfortunately. We're just going to see how long it takes to get a Vert Chest. Oh, we, we must have got one. Yeah, we got one. Alright, boys. Let's go ahead and crack open a few of these. The best thing we can get from the Vert Casket Tier 5 would be the Onyx and Owner's Attachment. A BFG 900 too, that'd be huge. Oh, we got the Extreme Collector Tier 5. That's actually really good. Oh, Diamond Donator. All right, loot's coming in now. Also, 670 vote tickets back from these. Holy shit. And that is all of them wrapped up. 780 vote tickets back. 190 Furious Flasks. We have four vote chests to open now. We just got a Arg from the first one. From the second, we got 5,000 Azeroth Rune Tier 3. That's a rip. Soul Eater from the third. And the fourth, we got another Soul Eater. Time to open 100 cage keys. Hey, a cage scroll. Let's go. After just 60 opened. I've actually opened 400 on my Iron Man and not got that yet. Oh, and a ruby scroll. There we are. All done. Hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea as to what you get as rewards. I think once you've got all the information that I've given you in this video, you're no longer a starter on Azerite. You are an official gamer here. To carry on with the progression, you want to go through the zones. Obviously do raids with your friends whenever you can. And honestly guys, just have a good time. If you want to, you can also work towards unlocking the bosses. I know Inverter Zim is a really good semi-AFK boss that you can farm out for monster fragments, even after the update. 
I would really recommend doing that and also unlocking all the other Slayer bosses too because you'll need them down the line. Just carry on making progress, trying to buy all the upgrades, Colin Colin POS will be your saviour. Unless you're an Iron Man like myself, but this is the amount of progress that I've made in just about a week. And to be honest with you, I really haven't been going hard. I've made over 200 mil cash, close to 500 PVM shards, I've barely touched Slayer, I've done one task actually. But I'm enjoying the grind and that is all that matters. If you do want to check out Azerite, all the links are down below of course. And if this video did help you at all, please do leave a like rating. A lot of time has gone into this guys, so it would really be appreciated. If I have missed out anything in particular, make sure you do comment it down below and I'll pin your message. This is literally being uploaded just to help out people. It's not really the most entertaining video in the world. But even if it helps out just a few people here on Azerite, then it's done its fucking job. Anyways, I'm going to wrap up this very long video right now. Take it easy, guys. Join us right. All the links are down below. And yeah. I will see you soon. Yeah. They love to see you at your worst. Stick the knife in where it hurts. Fuck them all. I know my worth. I'm cashing in for that purse. I spent years in that dirt. Now I'm taking chances. I'm building my own church. They can't take away what you've been going through for years. Yeah. But I'm back in this bitch overcoming these fears. fears. No hip, hip.